Hi, I'm Kenny Erickson, Parts Manager at Landmark Implement in Minden. And today I want to show you a few spray tips that we use, or our most common spray tips that we use. Um, we have four different spray tips here on our table. Uh, two are for dicamba, this one and this one. And two are for liberty. And the dicamba tips are a coarser droplet size to, to help with the drift reduction. The Liberty are a little bit finer size so they can cover the plant and they are an angled tip. And we'll show you the differences here in just a moment. This first tip is a tip that we use for Liberty and you can see here if you look from the side it's got an angle to it and the idea of having the angles is when you put them across your boom on your sprayer you can angle one backwards and one forward and paint both sides of the plant as you pass over it. So I'll turn this on and we'll see the angle spray. And I don't know if you can see it in your video but if you noticed on the back side of it, when we had that running, there was some fines misting up in that. And that's what's getting your coverage into your Liberty. This is another Liberty tip. It does kind of the same thing, only not quite as much of an angle, but it has two at the same time. So you're painting front and back. And again, you can see it's kind of a more finer droplet size for penetration and, and, and coverage. Now when we go to the dicamba tips, we have two different tips that we use. This first one is actually not an air inducted tip, but it still produces a coarse droplet size. The second one we'll look at, it is an air inducted tip, and it's a wider tip. These, the twin cap and this one are each 120 degree spray angles. The directed tip, 3D tip, is a 110 degree angle. This one will actually be 130 and you'll be able to see it across our table as we, as we look at them. So here's the non-air inducted dicamba tip. if you can notice, see where the spray is hitting at the end of the table. When we change to our 130 degree tip, it's actually hitting the end of the table. So it's a lot wider pattern. And you can really notice on the last tip how you can actually physically see how much bigger the droplet size is on that for reducing drift. Uh, the idea of having a 130 degree angle on that tip is you can run your boom lower to keep it out of the wind, closer to the ground, and it does a really nice job. Um, the one thing about this last tip, when you go to an exact apply machine or pulse width modulation, you, there is no tip that can be air inducted and used with those except for this tip. This is the only tip approved for dicamba use through pulse width modulation. So we have a few tools that we're selling that, that help us aid in, in finding bad tips and, and uh, helping your sprayer to perform at its best. <clears throat> this is the first tool. It's a uh, little deal you can take your tip off if you have a plug tip you can charge it with air and it'll lock in and you put your tip against the end of your here and when it pushes 
it puts out 50 pounds of pressure to blow out what's ever in that tip. That way you're not handling your tip or getting it close to your mouth. Another tool we have is a cleaner. And it, it's got a little hook on this end. And this hook is really the handiest part of this tool. Because when you're changing spray tips, it'll hook on the levers and it'll give you some leverage to take your tips on and off with. So when you're doing 100 of these at a time, it's not hard on your hands. It helps you take them off. Uh, we also have an inversion tester. This tests the air temperature at six and a half meters and at two meters. And it'll, it lets you know when uh, you have warm air above cold air, which causes inversion, which can actually pick your spray up and hold it in the air and allow it to be moved for quite a distance. And the last one I'll show you is uh, spot on. It's a calibration tester. It's real simple. When you're checking your spray tips to make sure they're they're not war or that they're all even. This is a really handy tool to use. It's real quick and simple. And I'll show you here in a second. I'm going to turn the sprayer deal back on. But all you have to do is push the start button and when you have your dash above gallon per minute you want to make sure that you're checking it at 40 pounds of pressure. Our system isn't quite working right so we can't quite get there but it'll give you an idea. So we're running 39 pounds of pressure. We have a red tip, which is a number four tip. So we're just a little bit under, but with the pressure, the tips have to be checked at 40 pounds to get a correct reading. It has two sensors in it. So when it starts filling up and, and only use water, it'll fill past the first. And when it passes the second, it times it. So it gives you your reading of how much you're putting out. Now you can go across your sprayer and check each one and as long as they're all about the same you're okay. What you want to look for is one that's starting bigger, a bigger reading or smaller reading. Then you know if you have one that's plugged or wore out. That way you're getting an even spray across your field. We do have it available in a kit with gloves, goggles, all, all three items are in there. So handy thing you can get and throw behind the seat in your sprayer and away you go. Any questions on any of the products we talked about, please contact your local Landmark Parts Department.